for Ben and Ed. set up a laptop, a couple of candles, of course a power lock cut still on but this gives off brilliant light. Can you can hear me or not. Uh, something I wrote in my book a long time ago. A long time ago, a couple of years. It might be incorrect. It is not what the man of science believes that distinguishes him, but how and why he believes it. His beliefs are tentative, not dogmatic. They are based on evidence, not on authority or intuition. And there's no power. <laughs> What's the world going to do without power? Look at that instead. Power's out. All lights are off. a candle. <laughs> How good are candles? Sorry fella, looking in your house. Oh, hey, no. oh, let me show you something. <laughs> so, bits of scraps of wood. Me and my son make this together. It's just a bit of ply, a couple of bits of pine. Right, just teaching him roughly. I do certain joins. This was just scrap, that's why it doesn't fit so well, but he understood the analogy. Do you understand? Okay, a bit of strength and support along the back there with a nice big fat panel. Oh, my son's gaming computer. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just a it's just plain old ply board. We did it together, so there's two pieces here piece in between to give it stability, piece at the bottom to give it strength. Sandwich on either side of the uh, pine. And so you know, you've seen, you've seen my bookshelves, that's, that's the wood. In the old house the shelves went to the top. And so the excess wood, I just bought a couple of things that I've got a drawing board under here. It's upside down, but that's what it is. The same thing, just those bits of ply. So we've got looking in your house. It's so quiet. <laughs> so half past twelve. There's a power cut in Alton. Who knows why? How did the universe grow? How did the universe grow from a tiny fireball to its present size? Where did life on Earth come from? How do planets form? How will it end? And how do we even know all this anyway? John Gribbin, one of Britain's most popular writers about science and the people who made it happen, has decided to create a biography of the greatest subject of all the universe itself, from beginning to end and beyond. From the Big Bang 14 billion years ago, the foundation, the formation of stars and galaxies, and the first stirrings of life, to the latest thinking on dark matter and a theory of everything, and beyond to the future possibilities of a big crunch or a big rip. This is the life history of the entire world around us. Yeah. Just 
down in there in the black out. High Street's fine, but we're all dead. <laughs> Do you like the polished floor? I did that all by myself. Is. So we've got a dance all over here. Do like the polish? I think I did alright. And, uh, and then over here, we give it a two tone. Did come out quite as I wanted, but it's actually a three tone. You see that there? So the table area is squared off. So this, this nice run around the edge. <laughs> okay, let me show you something. Oh, no, I won't actually. I was going to show you a picture of my son when he was born. Oh. on black holes. So this thing I wrote it's only one quick sentence. It says it states um, at this point in time I am convinced that I am right. because it applies to me because it applies to uh, so many so many people yeah and we're all certain we know what's going on at any one point you understand ten years ago I thought I knew what was going on and now I realise that I didn't <laughs> at this point in time I think I know what's going on I'm fully prepared that in, in 10 years to say I was wrong. Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow if I have to, if I find some more information. Bible quote, you will become lost among the nations. Isn't, isn't that what's happened to us all? Aren't we all a bit lost? And yet at the same time, it seems the Lord doesn't want us to have one whole nation. Didn't like that before, did it? <clears throat> I hope you can hear me. Thanks for spending this time with me. <laughs> what do scientists mean when they say that they know what goes on inside an atom, say, or what happened in the first three minutes of the life of the universe? They mean that they have what they call a model of the atom, or the early universe, or whatever it is, they are interested in, and that this model matches the results of their experiments or their observations of the world. Such a scientific model is not a physical representation of the real thing, the way a model aircraft represents a full-scale aircraft, but is a mental image which is described by a set of mathematical equations. The atoms and molecules that make up the air that we breathe, for example, can be described in terms of a model in which we imagine each particle to be a perfectly elastic little sphere, a tiny billiard ball, with all the little spheres bouncing off one another and the walls of their container. That is the mental image, but this is only half the model. What makes it a scientific model is that the way the sphere, spheres move and bounce off one another is described by a set of physical laws written in terms of mathematical equations. In this case, there are essentially the laws of motion discovered by Isaac Newton more than 300 years ago. Using those mathematical laws, it is possible to predict, for example, what will happen to the pressure exerted by a gas if it is squashed into half its initial volume. So, oh, that's another one. I am you, 
you or me, we are us, us are they. <laughs> that, that, that was, um, do you remember, um, people were talking about my verb in the womb, that's my notes on that, holographic universe. Pop stars are black holes because stars supposedly give energy, whereas the pop stars just absorb it, don't they? Oh, look, there it is. <laughs> I am convinced at this time that I am right. <laughs> I said these um applies to everyone and everything. But some people are not willing to change these things, you know. Enjoying my little evening in the uh, power cut. <laughs> as far as I remember, there isn't too much in here, despite the difficulty of it at the time when I was reading it, that can't be found much more easily on YouTube. And to a certain degree, yes, this is just this chap's opinion, okay? But, uh, he has an opinion backed up by the establishment. <laughs> Fisher of a man, that, that's one strange fella. Well, I did enjoy listening to him at one point. Gordon Bowden, quite in fact, important fella, if he's, if he's right and true. David Foster Wallace. Charlie says, cancel your TV license. Hashtag the bag, people. That's a creepy adverb. I'll return to these. I'll, I'll make some kind of videos, I suppose. On those, these channels, these places, paper up in the sea. Strategic fatter. Be surprised at some of the names you find in here. There's Mr. Quasi. Serena Shim. Everybody heard of that? Serena Shim, heard of that? Badderification. A uh, good fan of the law. Dan Dix, Luke Wazowski. Of course. Vasco de Gama. A lot of these are just uh, YouTube channels I'll come across before I start my own. I'll go back to a lot of these and subscribe to them for a while. Oh, what a one to finish on. I can't access him, of course, but um, you should all check out Michael Steinbacher. I know everyone was talking about tree roots and stuff being mountains, but yeah, you should listen to Michael Steinbecker. He's, uh, he's passed away now, but uh, that man had some good stuff to say. Four news, of course. I came across him long before that, but sometimes the time weren't right to put them in my book, you know. Anyway, that's me and my power cup. I want to sit here and contemplate my thoughts in the dark. Uh, I hope everybody's all right. I'm gonna upload this one as soon as the power's back on, so you'll know I'm all right. How fortunate for governments that people do not think Adolf Hitler. <laughs> P.
peace and love, everybody. Much love. I just remember saying, you see him sitting on my desk, on my table. <laughs> Move his legs. Christmas present. <laughs> Cute.